Hello everyone. Today we're going to be talking about how to set up the Raspberry Pi for an Impium Smart Mirror. And so first of all, the materials that you'll need are a computer. So I'm using a MacBook today, but you could also use a Windows machine or a Linux machine. You are going to need a micro SD card. I have a 16 gigabyte Patriot micro SD card. You are also going to need to be able to put that into your computer. So to do that, I have a USB to micro SD converter here. And then I also have a USB-C to USB converter so that I can put all of this into my MacBook. And the last converter that I have is a micro HDMI to HDMI converter. So that way I can plug my Raspberry Pi into my monitor. I also have a Raspberry Pi 4, two gigabytes of RAM right here. I have an HDMI cord already plugged into the converter into this Raspberry Pi into this monitor. And the monitor is an Acer KA242Y monitor in case anyone wants to know exactly what type of monitor that is. And last but not least, we have a keyboard and mouse as well for some manual configurations once we have this Raspberry Pi all set up. So the first thing you'll need to do is go to impiam.com to retrieve your impiam access code. So if you scroll down to the do it yourself section, you can see this third option is the impiam access code. So you'll need to retrieve your access code from there. Otherwise you will not be able to use the impiam software that we use in the rest of this video. Then you can go on over to raspberrypi.com slash software. And this is where we are going to get the Raspberry Pi imager that we download onto our MacBook or our Windows machine. And this is going to install the Raspberry Pi operating system onto our micro SD card. So if you scroll down just a bit, you can see download for Mac, Windows, or Ubuntu. And I already have it downloaded uh, for my Mac operating system. So you can see that here and you are going to need to choose an operating system. I am using the recommended Bullseye from April 4th of 2022 that is already cached on my machine, but you can choose other options if you choose just by going to Raspberry Pi, operating system other, and then choose another operating system that you might like, but I would just recommend using the recommended software. So now we are going to begin writing to this micro SD card. So what I'm going to do is put this micro SD card into the USB converter and then plug that into the USB-C converter. And then plug that into the Mac opera, excuse me, into the MacBook. I see that the red light is on. That means that it's plugged in. So now I can choose the storage and I'm going to choose this media device of 16 gigabytes. That's the micro SD card. And then before selecting write, there are, this is optional, but if you want to skip some steps later, it might be nice to do some configurations ahead of time, such as turning on SSH. You can enable SSH from here. You can also update the username and password if you'd like of this Raspberry Pi. And then you can also configure your Wi-Fi uh, before you even write it to the SD card as well. So that might be nice so you don't have to configure it on the Raspberry Pi itself. But this is, again, totally optional. You don't have to do this. And then now we click Write. And it's going to say that it will erase everything that's already on there, and then it's totally fine. So we're going to select Yes, enter in our password. And now we wait. All right. Now that this has successfully written the operating system to the micro SD card, this is saying that we can safely remove the SD card from the reader. And that is because I have the settings to automatically eject the micro SD as soon as it's done writing. So I don't have to worry about actually ejecting the storage device. So I can simply click continue. And then what I can do is unplug this from the MacBook and we no longer need the MacBook for the rest of the tutorial. So I'm gonna put this away. All right, now that we have the SD card formatted, I'm gonna go ahead and take it out of the adapter. So we're gonna take it out of here. 
and then take it out of here. And all that I will be doing is placing it inside the Raspberry Pi 4, just like so. And we already have this Raspberry Pi uh, connected to a power source and the HDMI micro con adapter to regular HDMI plugged into this monitor already. Uh, so I'll just get this keyboard over here for now. Let me get the mouse over here for now. And we will plug this in. Okay, and you can see that the Wi-Fi is already connected because we had that preset in our settings when we were using the Raspberry Pi imager. So what I'm going to do now is connect this keyboard into the Raspberry Pi, just through the uh, USB right here. Then I have my mouse, my wireless mouse uh, attached into this keyboard as well. So I can go ahead and use that off screen a little bit. It's right here. So what we're gonna do first is go up into the top left corner and click the start menu and then go to preferences and then appearance settings. And what we're gonna be doing is removing this wastebasket icon here because we wanna use this as a smart mirror and it does have to hit the uh, desktop when booting up. So we just wanna remove some of this clutter. So we can go ahead and uncheck wastebasket and then now it's gone, which is great. And then I also wanna show how to rotate the screen if you are interested in doing something like that. So you can again, click the start menu, go to preferences, and then down to screen configuration. And then you will see uh, HDMI one right here. And we're gonna go to configure, screens, HDMI one, orientation, and then you'll see a drop down that has normal, right, inverted, or left. So we're looking at normal right now, Right would be as if we turn the screen to the right. Left is as, as if we turn the screen to the left and inverted is just a 180. So depending on the orientation of your smart mirror, you can go ahead and flip the orientation. For the purpose of this tutorial, I'm just going to keep it uh, normal so that we don't have to actually move the screen uh, to move forward. So after you flip the orientation, it's gonna ask you to reboot. So if you do that, you can go ahead and uh, wait for that. But otherwise we can open up the internet And now we are going to get access to the InfiM software. So we go to github.com slash dancoot, that's D-A-N-C-O-U-T, slash smart mirror gat server. I will be sure to put a link to that in the description. And this is the actual repo that we will be cloning in for the smart mirror and it will install everything that we need uh, for the Raspberry Pi. So if you scroll down to the bottom of the page, you will see this script here. So all we need to do is click this little copy button. So you can either select it all and then right click and copy or just click this little copy button. Right here that I, yeah, right here, sorry. Go ahead and copy that and then open up your terminal and we're simply gonna paste that in. And this is going to get all the software set up on our Raspberry Pi uh, for you automatically. So you click enter. And now you'll see, enter the display device name specified from the Firebase document. And what this means is it needs the impiM access code that you retrieved earlier in the video from impiM.com. So you'll go ahead and enter that access code in here. For this example, it is test one, two, three. And be very careful to get this device name correct because otherwise you may have to start this process over if you enter in an invalid code you want to repurchase, but you will have to start over the, the reformatting and just to make things a little bit cleaner. But uh, so just be very careful entering that in. And mine is test one, two, three for this. And I will click enter. You'll notice that the background changed and that's because we wanted this to look a little bit more like a smart mirror when it's starting up and not the Linux background or the Raspberry Pi desktop background. And right now what it is doing is just installing all the directories that are necessary, updating the software, and now we wait.
All right, and you can see that it just shut itself down. So once it finishes installing everything, it goes ahead and reboots itself so that you can see the uh, system in action. And that was the custom splash screen that we had just installed through that installation script. And here we are at the desktop of the Raspberry Pi and it opens up the internet and loads in our welcome page. And if you see this screen, that means you have successfully set up your Impiamp Smart Mirror and you can go ahead and control this using the app.